What I'm taking a look at today is this uh, live steam O gauge locomotive. Now I had a chance a little while ago, while ago to get this. Um, it's a Bowman brand uh, O gauge live steam loco, and I bought it off of eBay like everything else. And um, I got it for what I thought was a pretty good price. Uh, it was complete, had the tender, which is often missing. So uh, I got this thing home, and, and uh, I'm no expert on live steam, although I'm sort of becoming one <laughs> quickly here. But in any case, um, I got it. It was complete, but uh, it, had, uh, it had suffered the ravages of time. Um, I think this was uh, made in a probably uh, around the 1926 to 1930 time frame, and it, uh, it looked like it had sat there since about that time frame. So in any case, I started fooling around with it, and uh, a lot of the plumbing was terrible, so I, I started uh, replumbing it, and um, when looking at the boiler and whatnot, there's a lot of leaky seams, so what I did is I, I disassembled everything, cleaned everything, and resoldered everything, the boiler um, and whatnot. So anyhow, I got it to a point where um, I was able to try and fire it. Now the... Um, the burners on the uh, heating unit here, they were all they were all destroyed. They were all crimpled, and, and the uh, the feed tube was was uh, was all bent. And somebody had tried to plug the uh, the leaky seams with copper wire and solder, and it was really bad. So I made uh, I made new uh, burner holders, wick holders, and for each wick holder, I've also made a uh, a little cap so I can cap off uh, the burners when I don't uh, when I use this thing and there this piece was missing too this little drain piece this allows you to fill this up to a certain height and then when it pees out you you stop and then I made I made a top I made I made a new uh, piece to go in here too because it was all destroyed the threading was all destroyed um, so I fired it and it didn't run for a hell of beans, so I said, "Well, needs more work." So uh, what I did originally is um, with the original cylinders here and the original pistons. Um, there was so much steam leaking out of the cylinders, and the fit up of the piston, the cylinder was terrible. So the first thing I did is I made new cylinders for it, and I, I machined them out of brass and I reamed them to you know a good size using a reamer. And it held the size good, and I checked it with gauge pins or whatever. And I had a nice, nice uh, .375 uh, bore in that. So I tried it again, and it worked better. It actually ran a little bit this time, but it wouldn't stay running. So I said, "Well, I'm still leaking. Uh, I'm still leaking too much." So um, I said, "Well, maybe if I make piston rings for these pistons." So I, I got this PTFE rod and, and machined myself up some piston rings and put that back together. Now that worked a lot better and it ran and it ran pretty good but it wasn't running like it should have run. So I'm thinking uh, I measured the pistons up themselves and they, they, were, they were two or three thousands undersized, maybe even four thousands undersized from the bore of the, uh, the new cylinder. So. I, upon further research, uh, I found out that the, uh, it seemed to me anyhow that the, the little rings they put in the pistons are for, to hold oil when you run this. So I went back, uh, went back to the lathe and I machined new pistons out very carefully and, um, I sized them very carefully. They're about a half a thousandths undersized and the, I put two little, uh, ring grooves in there to hold oil. And I found out that you want to use a uh, a fairly heavy weight oil in the uh, the pistons. And the other thing I did: these engines uh, are known to uh, really run fast, um, although not mine because it barely ran at all. But I made this valve here to control the uh, steam output to the cylinders, is to act as a throttle control. Now, um, until today, that wasn't working. The way I wanted it to, but what I did is it it was it like everything else in this train was very leaky, and this is a valve I 
remachined from a from another valve I had lying around. So I added um, an O-ring seal on this side, an O-ring seal on this side. That stopped it from leaking. And when I put the uh, when I put the new pistons in the new cylinders and got all my leaks corrected, it runs beautifully. Oh, it's <laughs> it's so fast, it's ridiculous. But I can throttle it down with this uh, this valve here. Now I found out that some of the uh, some of the trains actually use a exhaust regulator to control the exhaust uh, pulses and, and throttle the, the machine that way. Um, the theory is you that you still have full uh, steam pressure to the cylinders, so apparently you get good low speed power. Now I may find that I have to do that. I don't know, but the way this ran, it was. Uh, it was really, uh, it really looked promising to me. Um, I, I rebuilt the uh, the pop off valve with new spring and made sure that all worked good. Um, under the under the train, um, I lapped in the uh, the oscillating valves. This is a single action oscillating cylinder, which just means that it pushes the piston out in the the momentum or the other piston drives it back and, and completes the exhaust cycle. So it, on some trains you have a double acting piston where it, the, it's pushed in both directions. This one's just pushed out and it runs back in by itself or, or from help from the other side. Um, all the bearings were, were horrible on this thing. So in fact there was no bearing so I, I bored out the, uh, the axle holes, made some brass uh, bushings and, and made sure the axles were good. Um, one of the uh, one of the uh, wheel flanges on this was chipped also, so I, I made a uh, aluminum insert to go over the uh, the existing casting, much like uh, a real locomotive would be retired. Um, they I I uh, made the aluminum piece about two thousandths undersized, heated it up, and and did a shrink fit to the uh, original casting, so that's that works good. And I, I made sure that all the wheels were running true. Now. This, uh, I also replaced the springs for the uh, oscillating pistons. It, it, you know, they're, they're not held tightly, or they're not held uh, fixed against there. They're held by spring pressures. And there's, there's two holes in this block here. One is the input for the steam, and one is the output for the exhaust. So by oscillating like this, it, it picks up a steam cycle, and it picks up an exhaust cycle by the, uh, by the wheels. So what I'm going to do in a couple minutes is... Uh, fire this thing up. It takes about 10 or 15 minutes to come up to steam and at that point uh, at that point uh, I'll show you how it runs on the uh, on the stand here and if I get enthused later on I'm going to give it a shot around the layout. Um, I'm kind of hesitant to do that because there's there's alcohol fire in this thing and if it uh, if it pours over the potential for disaster is enormous but uh, you know no guts no glory so I, I think I'm probably going to go for the glory here. The other thing that this uh, train doesn't have is uh, any kind of uh, connecting rods between the wheels. Now, I may later on, if this thing runs good and pulls cars, I may uh, make new wheels for this so I can put a connecting rod between the two and actually have uh, a dual drive uh, unit. But that's a, that's a product for a little bit down the line here. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to fill the burner up with alcohol. I've got brand new wicks in it. I'm going to fill the boiler up with water and I'm going to steam it up and uh, I'll show you how it runs on the test stand. Okay, so I've got my uh, my reservoir tank filled up. I've got all new wicks in here. Um, I let this soak a little bit so that it had time to uh, absorb uh, the alcohol from the thing. I've also, this this uh, towel down here, I've, I've just wet it down. I saturated it with water because there's, a, there's always a chance you're going to have some kind of fire, so this is a this is a good outside product that I'm doing indoors. So you can see how this uh, the burner wicks up. It, it burns pretty good. Now I also have caps for each of these burners. If I want to use uh, there's six total burners, but if I want to use uh, you know five or four or three or however many I want to do, I can put a uh, I can put a cap on it. Now that flame's pretty high. So I'm probably going to tone that down a little bit before I stick it into the train. Okay, I've got my uh, my reservoir and burners filled with water, and this just actually 
fits up in the bottom of the machine like that. And there's a, a nut you run up here. There it goes. So you can just tighten that on there and that, that holds the alcohol burners up there. And that's alright. So So I've got the uh, burners in there. So I've got the piston in the other side. What you do on these pistons is you use this uh, steam oil. It's a, it's a specific grade oil made for this kind of thing. And, and you put it in there and then just insert the, uh, insert the piston into the cylinder. goes in nice. It's a nice fit. And then this 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 goes back on the uh, on the connecting rod there. Um, as far as the rest of the train goes, I use a lighter uh, a lighter grade oil for the uh, the cylinders where it oscillates. Which I'm going to put it a little bit there on each side. And a little bit there. Let me get the back here. Okay. Now the the, the water is uh, this is the uh, pressure valve, the safety valve. So uh, I'm not going to fill this completely full because it uh, it takes too long to up. Okay. Once you have that done, you can put your little, uh, there's a different, uh, there's a different screw that looks more original that I'm going to make instead of this thing here, but for right now this is, uh, this is fine. And we'll put this on. So basically this is uh, ready to go, ready to steam up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to light the burners. Okay, so I've got, uh, looks like I've got four lit, three actually. So let me just help it a little bit. There, that's, those are lit, and that's okay. So, all the all the burners are lit now. So now, um, this is going to take uh, about ten or fifteen minutes to steam up. So I'm not going to sit here and film that. So I'm going to stop the camera now. And when it steams okay, up, in real I'll time, be I've had this thing uh, burning now for about uh, six or seven minutes, and you can see it's steaming out of the uh, pop off valve. And it's got it's got plenty of pressure. Uh, at least it'll start now. So I'm going to turn this on. Sometimes you have, sometimes it'll start itself. Sometimes you have to give it a little assistance. So we'll see what happens. And there it goes. So I mean, it, it's it's really running beautifully now. It's nice and smooth. Um, a lot of guys run these on uh, the six burners. I, I've seen on uh, I've seen on some YouTube vids that the uh, guys kind of control the speed by uh, turning off the burners. But I, I seem to think this this valve works good. It, it seems to uh, and it's, it's still got fairly good uh, it's still got fairly good power even there. And as this uh, as this heats up more, it's going to be even uh, even better. It'll actually run faster at this setting. And uh, I don't know if you can see it. There's a little bit of uh, there's a little bit of uh, pressure escaping this valve 
which tells me that there's excess pressure in the uh, in the boiler so that uh, I'm not going to ever run out of steam pressure. And it, it, the thing, the thing flies. So uh, if I get up the nerve, I'm going to stick it on the layout and try and send it around a little bit. Uh, <laughs> it's just the open flame and everything. What I really should do is uh, set up some track outside or something, but uh, I don't know that I'm going to do that. Run it around the room too. So it's it's happily chugging away at, at uh, about an eighth throttle, so uh, it, it's pretty good. I don't see any leaks. There's there's no uh, there doesn't seem to be any steam coming out of the oscillating cylinders, so uh, I'm pretty happy with what this is. moves out. I think what I'm going to try and do is make some kind of uh, adjustable thing here where I can I can really uh, control this valving easily. Um, if this doesn't work out, I'm going to I'm going to try the exhaust regulation. But for right now, right now I'm not going to. I don't know how long this will run, but. Uh, you know, it'll run for 10 or 15 minutes anyhow, and I, I think I think some of them run like 40 minutes or so on a on a full boiler. So I don't know. The key to this thing, these kind of things, are, is to have it run out of run out of uh, fuel before you run out of water. That way, you don't damage the boiler. But it's, it sounds beautiful. It's purring. It's running very nice. So. Uh, And really, on a, on a new on a new engine, you want to run it in uh, for a couple couple boilers full of uh, stuff. So um, basically, these new cylinders, I've I've got about five minutes runtime on it right now. So I think once that piston really really seeps itself into that cylinder, it's going to run real nice. There's not, there's not a lot of heat under there. You know, you, you, can, you can comfortably put your hand under there. So, I mean, since heat rises anyhow, you wouldn't expect that. So it's, uh, later on today, I, I'm, I'm going to get the tender uh, fixed up a little bit. And then I'm going to, uh, I'm going to try it. Yeah, now, I can't imagine, yeah. Wanting to run it that fast. <laughs> so uh, that's it.